Shakespeare's Sonnets by William Shakespeare, Sonnets 111 to 120. 111. O, oh, for my sake, do you with fortune chide, the guilty goddess of my harmful deeds, that did not better for my life provide than public means which public manners breeds? Thence comes it that my name receives a brand, and almost thence my nature is subdued to what it works in, like the dyer's hand. Pity me then, and wish I were renewed. Whilst, like a willing patient, I will drink potions of eisel against my strong infection, no bitterness that I will bitter think, nor double penance to correct correction. Pity me then, dear friend, and I assure ye, even that your pity is enough to cure me. 112. Your love and pity doth the impression fill which vulgar scandal stamped upon my brow. For what care I who calls me well or ill, so you o'er green my bad, my good allow? You are my all the world, and I must strive to know my shames and praises from your tongue. None else to me, nor I to none alive, that my steeled sense or changes right or wrong. In so profound abysm I throw all care of others' voices, that my adder's sense to critic and to flatterer stopped are. Mark how, with my neglect, I do dispense. You are so strongly in my purpose bred, That all the world besides, methinks, are dead. 113. Since I left you, mine eye is in my mind, And that which governs me to go about, Doth part his function and is partly blind, Seems seeing, but effectually is out. For it no form delivers to the heart of bird, of flower, or shape which it doth latch. Of his quick objects hath the mind no part, nor his own vision holds what it doth catch. For if it see the rudest or gentlest sight, the most sweet favour, or deformedest creature, the mountain or the sea, the day or night, the crow or dove, it shapes them to your feature. Incapable of more, replete with you, my most true mind thus maketh mine untrue. 114. Or whether doth my mind, being crowned with you, drink up the monarch's plague, this flattery? Or whether, shall I say, mine eye saith true, and that your love taught it this alchemy, to make of monsters and things indigest such cherubins as your sweet self resemble, creating every bad a perfect best, as fast as objects to his beams assemble. Oh, tis the first, tis flattery in my seeing, and my great mind most kingly drinks it up. Mine eye well knows what with his gust is greeing, and to his palate doth prepare the cup. If it be poisoned, tis the lesser sin, that mine eye loves it, and doth first begin. 115. Those lines that I before have writ do lie, Even those that said I could not love you dearer, Yet then my judgment knew no reason why My most full flame should afterwards burn clearer. But reckoning time, whose millioned accidents Creep in twixt vows and change decrees of kings, Tan sacred beauty, blunt the sharpest intents, Divert strong minds to the course of altering things. Alas! Why fearing of time's tyranny, might I not then say, Now I love you best, when I was certain o'er incertainty, Crowning the present, doubting of the rest? Love is a babe. Then might I not say so, To give full growth to that which still doth grow. 116. Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds, or bends with the remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever-fixed mark, that looks on tempests and is never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bark, whose worth's unknown, although his height be taken. Love's not time's fool, though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come. Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, 
but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be error, and upon me proved, I never writ, nor no man ever loved. 117. Accuse me thus, that I have scanted all, wherein I should your great deserts repay, forgot upon your dearest love to call, whereto all bonds do tie me day by day, that I have frequent been with unknown minds, and given to time your own dear purchase right, that I have hoisted sail to all the winds which should transport me farthest from your sight. Book both my willfulness and errors down, and on just proof surmise, accumulate, bring me within the level of your frown, but shoot not at me in your wakened hate, since my appeal says I did strive to prove the constancy and virtue of your love. 118. Like as, to make our appetite more keen, with eager compounds we our palate urge, as, to prevent our maladies unseen, we sicken to shun sickness when we purge. Even so, being full of your ne'er cloying sweetness, to bitter sources did I frame my feeding, and, sick of welfare, found a kind of meatness to be diseased, ere that there was true needing. Thus policy in love, to anticipate the ills that were not, grew to faults assured, and brought to medicine a healthful state which, rank of goodness, would by ill be cured. But thence I learn, and find the lesson true, drugs poison him that so fell sick of you. 119. What potions have I drunk of sirens' tears, distilled from Lembeck's foul as hell within, applying fears to hopes and hopes to fears, still losing when I saw myself to win? What wretched errors hath my heart committed, whilst it hath thought itself so blessed never? How have mine eyes out of their spheres been fitted in the distraction of this madding fever? O oh, benefit of ill! Now I find true that better is, by evil still made better, and ruined love, when it is built anew, grows fairer than at first, more strong, far greater. So I return rebuked to my content, and gain by ill thrice more than I have spent. 120. That you were once unkind befriends me now, and for that sorrow, which I then did feel, Needs must I under my transgression bow, Unless my nerves were brass or hammered steel. For if you were by my unkindness shaken, As I by yours, you've passed a hell of time, And I, a tyrant, have no leisure taken To weigh how once I suffered in your crime. Oh, that our night of woe might have remembered My deepest sense, how hard true sorrow hits, And soon to you, as you to me, then tendered the humble salve which wounded bosom fits. But that your trespass now becomes a fee, mine ransom yours, and yours must ransom me. End of Sonnets 111 to 120 of Shakespeare's Sonnets